Hi guys, welcome to Lulu with the Lamp. In this video, I'm gonna show you my five-step foolproof method for interpreting ABGs for your next exam. I'm just starting out on YouTube, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe so I can post more content. Here's the thing about ABG questions, guys. These are giveaways. These are freebie questions on exams. Why do I say that? Um, because unlike other nursing questions, they don't have two or three or sometimes four right answers that you have to choose between. These questions are empirical. That means there is only one right answer. And if you follow these steps, you will be able to find that answer every time. So step one, look at the pH level. The questions, when you get them on your exams, they look something like this. You'll have this kind of list of these uh, values. I've put the normal values up in the corner here and so I'll just leave that here for now. You guys can memorize it later. Before we go on, let's talk really, really quickly about what these numbers mean. Your first number is your pH. It's giving you the acidity of your blood in general. Your PCO2 is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, when it's in the body, kind of breaks down and is used in different ways. One of the things it does is it releases carbonic acid, carbonic acid. So when you see CO2, I want you to think it makes carbonic acid and therefore it is naturally acidic. Also think carbon dioxide is what you breathe out. You breathe in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide. And therefore when we're looking at these numbers, it represents the respiratory system. This kind of number equation thing over here is bicarbonate or bicarb. Whenever you think bicarb, it's really, really helpful if you think base bicarb because bicarb is basic or alkaline. It is the thing in your blood that will uh, decrease the acidity. The main part of your body that controls bicarb is your kidney. And so this number here is going to represent what is going on in your metabolism. What's happening with this number is going to represent uh, metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. This number here, the CO2 is going to represent your respiratory system. So the first value usually here um, is your pH level. You take a look at that, you decide right away, is this acidic or is it basic? Well, our norm is 7.35 to 7.45. Anything under 7.35 is acidic. Anything over 7.45 is basic. If you have a hard time understanding that, it's a little bit counterintuitive, you can click on my other video and I go through it in quite a bit of detail um, as to why that is. But we're just gonna look at this and right away, 7.3, we are going to note that it is acidic. And I always, even on an exam, I will write that down on the paper so that I know what it is. So now you know whether overall what's going on in the body, that's what your pH is telling you. So you already have half the answer to your question. You know this is going to be acidosis. Once we calculated it out, we know the body is acidotic. Second thing, we're going to look at the PCO2 or the CO2 level. We know that CO2, it becomes carbonic acid, meaning the more CO2 we have in our body or in these in the blood, the more acidotic the blood is. Therefore, the higher this number is, the more acidotic. We take a look over here at our norm. The CO2 in this case is 68. We look at our norm over here and obviously that's high. And again, anytime it is high, that means it's more acidotic. There's more CO2 to build up more carbonic acid. And therefore we have acidosis here. We write that down again, just like we did for the first one, and we move on to level three. We take a look at the bicarb. In this case, the bicarb is actually normal, and so we're just going to write down normal above that, and we're gonna move on to the next level. We already know the body is in acidosis because our pH level itself is acidotic. We look at the CO2 and the bicarb, and we just find the one that matches. It's that simple. In this case, both the pH and the CO2 are acidic. And we know that CO2 represents the respiratory system. So right there, we know it is respiratory acidosis. Right there, you've got the big part of your answer. Of course, you will always have those profs like me who like to throw in that extra little uh, part and ask you whether or not it is compensated. It's actually not that complicated at all, and I'll cover it when we go over step five in my next video.